Welcome to We Are the People with Tracy Marks and Jorge Estamba, who ask you to know what's happening with your student loan. Tracy and Jorge keep a deep look at student loans in this country and the industries that surround it. Every week, We Are the People will bring you new insight into the corporate welfare industry, such as bailouts, and they connect with student loans. The show will highlight on your constitutional rights and how the current system is built to infringe upon them. Join the conversation by visiting our website chat room at wearethepeople.tv. Or call the show at 888-565-1470 and let us hear from you. And now, let's tune in to Tracy and Jorge for this week's discussion. Rick Stroll in the host seat tonight. We've got a guest with us, Alexandra Casuso. We'll introduce her momentarily. I want to go through some other issues. Tracy's on assignment. Um, a number of things going on. First of all, if you're in the South Florida area or going to be here this weekend or next weekend, uh, South Florida Renaissance Festival at Quiet Waters Park in Deerfield Beach. You were just listening, hopefully, to Hallie Elise and her show. Hallie's going to be there. Tracy's going to be at the Renaissance Festival as well. And uh, Taylor Ash, one of our student loan payment success stories, will be there with her specialty soaps from Calypso Salt and Soap. Um, you can find her at CalypsoSaltAndSoap.com, and you can see her at the Renaissance Festival these next couple of weekends while the festival is still on. Again, that's going to be a Quiet Waters Park in Deerfield. A number of other things going on tomorrow night, very important. Uh, there's going to be a speech before Congress, before a joint session of Congress by Benjamin Netanyahu the Prime Minister of Israel. There's been a lot of pushback by the administration because they don't want you to hear what Netanyahu has to say. But Netanyahu lives daily on the front lines of terrorism and has to deal with it. And he understands what the issues are, particularly the issues in this treaty that the administration is secretly trying to give away to Iran to allow them to develop nuclear power and to make the claim that the administration has a treaty. whoopie do that they make a treaty if it's a bad treaty. Why is that treaty being kept secret? Why are the terms being kept secret? Not just from the people of the United States, but from the Congress of the United States. So I expect some interesting stuff to happen tomorrow night. Uh, some cats to be let out of the bag, if you will, by Netanyahu, which does not please the administration. But we've got an administration that's been captive and captivated by the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a vassal of Iran. So be very careful about that. And by the way, if you're interested in Hillary Clinton, she's in the same boat. So we need to talk and think about these people and what they're really doing, because they love to tell us that they're doing things for us to help us as a nation. I got my questions, serious questions. And guess what? I'm not the only one. So you need to be looking into these things. Now, it's interesting. I pulled up for tonight uh, comparative Arab-Israeli land and population. And it turns out that the Arab countries, and that doesn't include Indonesia, and it doesn't include Pakistan, and it doesn't include Iran, but I pulled 23 Arab countries out from Algeria to Yemen, um, have about 5.5 million square miles to support a population of about 350 million people. Now, 350 million people, that's about the size of the United States, a little bit bigger than us, but pretty close. And we've got 5.5 million square miles. Compare that to Israel. They've got approximately 8 million people and more as people leave Europe and leave and get pushed out of Arab states, Islamic states, but about 8 million people in about 8,000 500 miles of territory. Comparatively speaking, the Arab countries have about 650 more times more land than Israel does, but only 46 times more population. So Israel is about 14 times more densely populated than these Arab lands. Just think about it. I think that there ought to be a place for these Israelis to be. And why not? And why shouldn't they have defensible borders? And why should they be under threat, 
especially under threat of Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iranian vassals? Yeah, so listen tomorrow night and see what you think. The uh, Last week, the FCC voted to take over the Internet. Well, check out Protect Internet Freedom. They've got uh, a petition out. They want you to talk to your congressmen and senators and ask them, demand for them, government accountability. For some reason, the federal government is growing by leaps and bounds and is not accountable. What are they doing? They're going to cost us a lot more, and they're going to impact negatively our liberties, which they already have been impacting negatively, our freedoms, our freedoms of choice, and particularly our freedoms of speech with this Internet takeover. Again, we were talking about secret negotiations with Iran. Now we're talking about secret negotiations with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, another free trade scheme, which is going to cost us jobs and cost us our values, all right? So look for Public Citizen. They've got a global trade watch. Public Citizen, they've got a global trade watch. Email your members of Congress and urge them to vote no on Fast Track. Do not give this administration authority to secretly create whatever it wants to create in trade policy. Make them come back to Congress. Make them do it publicly so that we know what agreements are being made and what damage is being done to us. Again, Public Citizen Global Trade Watch. Look for them. Write your congressmen and senators on the Trans-Pacific Trade Deal, Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. No on fast trade or fast track authorization. Um, interesting story about uh, admirals and generals, um, Pentagon tapes indicting Hillary on this Benghazi stuff. This Benghazi stuff is important stuff. Apparently, um, Gaddafi was willing to go into exile and abdicate, and we refused to allow him to do that. Apparently, there may be or may have been um, some secret facilities that we had in Benghazi that were holding prisoners, prisoners of Al-Qaeda, prisoners of these Islamic radicals. And perhaps that's why they attacked our facility there and killed our ambassador and others. Uh, let's see here. Something else, another petition to sign to talk about, to consider. Um, on Council for Citizens Against Government Waste. It says it's num America's number one taxpayer watchdog. Council for Citizens Against Government Waste. And what they want us to do is talk to our politicians and stop pouring tax money into the United Nations. United Nations doesn't like us, not helpful to us. So think about that. Read up on that. There's the Campaign for America's Future talking about defending Social Security and the earned benefits of older Americans. Guess what? You know, these are not entitlements that are gifts of the government. Social Security is not a gift of the government. Medicare is not a gift of the government. These are things that we've paid for check by check, paycheck by paycheck over the years. You now, it's funny to me because Campaign for America's Future is always talking about the first thing Republicans want to do is go after Social Security. What the heck do they think Democrats have been doing? Obama's taken over a trillion dollars out of Social Security and more out of Medicare, proposing another $330 billion taken out of Medicare you know, and Social Security. Uh, what's that doing? That's killing the program that existed for the people who paid for the program. And so talk to your congressmen, talk to your senators, look for those petitions. Look for the Senior Americans Association because the Senior Americans Association has a number of uh, petitions available for you to look at. One of them, uh, we're talking about Save Medicare Home Health Act of 2014. That's HR 5110. It's come over from the last Congress into this Congress. HR 5110 introduced last July. Right. Um, Important, allow seniors to have home health care out of Social Security. You know, they're better off in their homes most of the time than in facilities. Why should we be paying for third parties? You know, allow them, if we're going to pay for third parties, to have some home health care. Right. 
Um, so take action on behalf of seniors now. Uh, look for the petition. Um, you know, and talk to your congressmen and senators, Senior Americans Association. And that bill, by the way, is in committee. It hasn't gone anywhere. I checked on it today. I also checked on uh, uh, another petition and another bill, H.R. 449, okay, which is allowing student loan borrowers to discharge student loan debt in bankruptcy. Restore the rights of citizenship to student loan borrowers. These things were taken away by Congress decades ago. Yeah, these this was paid for by the industry, putting money in the pockets of congressmen and senators to give them more profits. So HR four four nine, ask your congressman to co sponsor this bill. I checked today, there are about three co sponsors. We need more than that. They're all Democrats. We need to you to talk to your Republicans as well. Right? And we need you to go to studentloanjustice.org and find this petition. And we need you to talk to your congressmen and senators about this petition to allow us to have citizenship, full citizenship, and the rights of citizenship if we're student loan borrowers. Why shouldn't we? You know, we've, we've bailed out the corporations. Why isn't the government working for us, the citizens, the people who pay the bill? Right? So think about those things. We'll talk about them some more. But right now, I want to get to Alexandra Casusa and uh, talk about our event that's coming up, The Truth About Student Loans at Florida Atlantic University. It's coming up on March 13th at 3 p.m., 3 to about 4.30 or so. Um, and Alexandra is going to talk about that. We're going to talk about her project and why she did it and what she's interested in and what the issues are. Alexandra, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to. So let us know. Talk about, uh, you know, what's going on with this panel that you put together at Florida Atlantic University on March 13th. Well, the uh, objective of the of the um, of the event. Well, there are actually three objectives to the event. The first one is um, to inform people and students in general about the dangers and the consequences, both psychological and um, and financial, about student loans. The second one is to provide people with um, alternatives to student loans, and um, you know how to get smart loans, how to get how to not get the ones that are potentially uh, devastating. Uh, for people's lives. And the third objective is um, if you already are in student loan debt, how to get out of it. Um, so we're going to have five panelists um, on the, um, in the event. The first one is going to be uh, Jeffrey Van Tries. He's actually an attorney at law and he himself has quite a bit of student loan debt and he is going to be um, discussing with students and with anybody who comes to the event how, how to get out of student loan debt. What, what do you do when you're already deep into into debt and um, and you don't know what your alternatives are. So he's going to be discussing that part. What do you do when you already have debt? The second panelist is going to be Shimeon Frederick. He is the president of uh, Trusted Debt Solutions. Um, he's going to be discussing which loans to take, what alternatives people have to loans, and he's also be um, talking about his business, which is consolidating student loan debt and trying to get people um, out of that without spending all the money that they want you to spend, um, the companies want you to spend. Uh, the third panelist is going to be Somia Munjal. She's going to be flying from New York. She is the president of uh, Youthful Services, which is a um, an NGO that um, talks to students as early as middle school about what what to do if you want to go to college how, how do you finance your education what um i think she focuses on entrepreneurship and uh, she's gonna pretty much be talking about how you can save up for student loans since um since um really early in in middle school and she's also gonna be talking about some alternatives if you're already in college or high school our fourth panelist is going to be donald cleveland he is the author of uh, the book Revitalizing America, and he's going to be discussing how, how easy debt can be acquired and how devastating it can be once you get your foot in, on the door of the student loan uh, business. Um, and then our final panelist is going to be Rick Stroll, 
and he is uh, going to be in his roles as a professor of law, ethics, and public policy, and as well as communications at local universities. So uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you're going to be talking about. Well, uh, as you know uh, from previous conversations, I've had considerable experience with student loans. I paid off one set uh, years ago and then uh, was induced to take on another set to go back to graduate school um, to work on my doctorate. Uh, I was told, you know, we'd have these bright futures there, uh, not to use the term that's used uh, by the state, but that I would have a bright future by going back to school and that there would be all kinds of well-paying jobs out there just waiting for me when I graduated and that my university would uh, um, support me in finding those jobs, would help me find those jobs. Well, none of that stuff turned out to be true. Uh, I did teach eventually. I did do some work uh, um, you know, for various law firms and for various organizations and in government uh, after I graduated. So I was able to use some of that education, but the money was never there. Uh, and I was stuck with... Uh, uh, a ton of debt. So I wanted to talk to the audience to, you know, uh, basically tell them that they need to be aware and be very well aware of what's true and what's not. Because the school recruiters, they want to fill seats. And the lenders, they want to get you locked into loans. And they want to, you know, make you into a cow and milk you for the rest of your life if they can get away with it as much as they can get away. Because they know that these jobs aren't there. They know that the economy is not going to be good. So be careful, be aware, be wary. Figure out other ways to do it if you must go to school or figure out other things that you can do. You know, it's a real concern too because the quality of education, especially K through 12, has been reduced compared to what it was decades ago in terms of what it was that you learned. Yeah, and I understand that um, because... Uh, you know, I've seen that in the classroom. I've seen that people have not gotten the education and they have a different set of interests and they don't know the history of the country and they don't have the values um, to be able to, to pass and to be able to have a higher education. So here we have students that are paying for a higher education and the higher education that they're getting is actually what they should have gotten through high school. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, that's exactly it. So now we have a situation where the bachelor's degree is replacing the uh, high school diploma. And people are now going to grad school and getting into further debt just to get a master's, which is a new bachelor's degree, pretty much. So every, not only are people getting into debt to fund their education through their bachelor's degree, they're also getting into debt so that they can... Um, kind of like stand out from the crowd because you know it's so normalized to have a bachelor's degree that now what do you do you apply for a job with a bachelor's degree everybody already has a bachelor's degree so in order for you to get that job you need to have a master's and now later on it's going to be a phd and there's going to be more and more and more debt and as you said the education from k um through 12 is not very good and people are not are definitely not ready not in college. the united states now i found a lot of foreign students come over um you know, to, to go to our colleges and universities, and they're frustrated because their high school education far exceeded the quality level um, and the value uh, of our high school education, and they're sitting in classrooms paying money um, for courses that uh, with material that they've already exceeded in terms of their own capabilities in education. You know, so there's a real question as to the value proposition that we're dealing with here and what students are getting pushed into and the dumbing down of America when it comes down to it. Yes, and a majority of those international students are, um, are told that they cannot take any AP classes or any uh, higher level classes because of their English proficiency, which is not a problem really because if you're doing mathematics or if you're doing science, English is really not a problem. So... Um, so, yeah. yeah, another concern, too, <clears throat> I don't know if you've experienced it or if you've heard about it. Um, I haven't had a lot, but I've had some of these conversations with other professors over the years. You know, as a professor, as somebody that had an education in America, um, whose education was still 
a fairly decent education. Um, you know, we are the standard, the professors, the faculty members are the standard for quality. They're the standard for what students should know and should have at the baccalaureate and at the master's and at the doctoral levels when they come out of their courses. Um, is there a dumbing down? Is there a pressure from the institutions uh, to give people higher grades than they deserve and to pass people through courses uh, when they can't really do the work that you think that they should have in those courses? Um, I've done research in a few universities around the United States, and that seems to be the case. Just like in high school, people, um, the standard of, of, the S, of, the, of the FCAT, right here in Florida, for example, the FCAT, um, it's, not, it's not like you need a certain percentage or a certain point, num like a number that mm -hmm. you need to pass. It is actually calculated based on how the students perform. So the curve is huge. And it's designed so 